and welcome back. And today, of course, we want to talk about this, the Beskar Ingot Seagate Fire Cuda External Hard Drive. A hard drive that is very much in the theme of The Mandalorian. Arguably the hottest Star Wars property right now. Um, and one that Disney really is trying to make the most out of right now. Now, let's go straight away to the elephant in the room about this drive. Um, of course, you are paying extra for that design this is an external hard drive and again normal 2tb external hard drives like this you can pick up for between 60 to 70 quid online for a decent usb powered usb 3.2 gin one external hard drive there and this arriving at between 89 and 99 pounds depending on where you shop around is a big old jump on that and in today's video we're going to look at certain bits of bobs about it we're going to get some close-up looks of it and of course we're going to be running it with those led lights running there in the background but one of the things I'm also going to be talking about is that price tag. Because although I do think that price is a little higher than I would like, I would argue there is more to this drive than just it being an external USB drive. There's a few, there's a couple of little bits about this drive that I think Seagate could very well lean into a little bit more and tell people about it and make it a little bit more unique than just the fact that it's got some fancy pantsy designs there on the front. I mean straight away that price tag 89 99 quid so again a decent little chunk up there just to put that into perspective within kind of the seagate portfolio and the rest of their drives there you've got your basic your backup drives there from seagate these are standard plastic no fantastic external drives that connect with usb they knocked around for about 59 pounds at 2tb so again that's where things start the next tier is your drives that have got your game of focus your led drives your drives that have got a little bit of buffering around the edge there, some protection in transit some of them are fabric based some of them copper some really intrinsically nice designs there they knock around for about 69 to 79 nicker overall there so again we've already got a jump up of 10 to 20 pounds there for that extra rubber protection around the edges being metal or using kind of unique slightly more niche design choices there overall and then after that you got your gamer focused external drives these are the ones that focus the xbox and playstation these are the ones that are licensed with those big gaming licenses or take advantage of leds and other pc gamer focused stuff to make their product a little bit more appealing to that demographic and Seagate aren't alone in this pretty much all the brands including wd of course do this as well with different licensed games and different argue uh, arguably types targeted um, mediums there but it's not unusual and these knock around for about 79 to 85 pounds so we're getting closer to where this drive lives within the general price point of most drives out there and again that still doesn't match it does that price tag just cover the mandalorian stuff that i'm going to talk about no there's a little bit more than that but that's enough talking about the usb industry as a whole you came to this video to look at this bloody thing so let's have a look inside to get inside you just got to remove the top there this is the way he said the thing and after that open it up get inside let's get inside there and inside we've got a few little bits and bobs and accessories of this drive much like when we opened up the fire cuda 530 uh, mandalorian edition we have a random piece of card here at the back there's nothing in there i've checked just backing the drive there behind kind of the look of the whole thing inside we've got stickers that you can put to your laptop to your console or anything like that i don't use them but i know there are people out there that do we've got information on the warranty of this drive as well as some information about utilizing the seagate toolkit that i'm going to show you later on in the video we have got an external USB drive. It's a fabric coated drive as well. For those that aren't aware, this is a big deal as far as I'm concerned with external drives. We're at a point now where I think a lot of us acknowledge that rubberized cables fray. Rubberized cables can receive damage over time. And it's just a little extra. We're seeing more and more power cables for phones. We're seeing a lot more fabric cables within peripherals like earphones and stuff. And I'm glad to see a premium product like this having a cable like that. Again, this is USB 3.2. Uh, gem one so again that's five gigabits per second with this drive somewhere between 130 to 160 megabytes per second there it's a 2.5 inch hard drive inside i don't know how to open this to be honest but if i did i'm pretty sure there's a barracuda inside this much like the rest of their series there are external ssds in their portfolio but this is very much an external 5400 rpm drive and there you have it that is our drive there if we have a look inside there we can see that it's got those designs all the way along and that is embossed as well that isn't just 
a, a static 2D there. You can feel that as you run your finger. Um, the Mandalorian logo at the top there isn't uh, embossed, which really surprised me because that was one of the things I really liked about the USB drive. But the Seagate logo there at the top is embossed. It's got a nice cut all the way along the bottom there. The LEDs are based there on the base of the device if we bring that all the way around. And on the back, we've got some lovely in-house stuff there from the Mandalorian there as well. This is the way. Um, so that's pretty much the drive. It's plastic, the outside of this. It's not metal, which I know a number of you, when you saw the word ingot being utilized there in the model ID. But, and there are metal enclosed drives out there from Seagate, not in this series. And again, they fall within that 69, 79 pound bracket there. And um, if we take a moment to have a close look at the drive itself, and see how it compares with other drives in the market. We can have a look at things like the WD Passport series there. This is again a 59 to 65 pound external drive there. We can see how these two drives compare quite well. And again, this one is smaller there. It's a little chunkier, but overall it's a smaller drive. It doesn't have the LED stuff there. And they've always kind of had this distinction between their physical designs between the two of them. It has to be said, even the Seagate logo is embossed there at the bottom. I've just noticed that there. If we go to um, up a couple of rungs, we can have a look at the GTEC rubberized armor drive there. Again, another 2TB drive. This is one that focuses on a lot of that rubberized protection all the way around the edges. And again, you can remove all of that to sort of see the drive inside. You remove the rubber stuff and you can have a little look and then you can see those drives. So again, it's... It's a fairly standard design, but I would argue the design of this drive is actually quite nice, this one. I, I like how, and this is before the Mandalorian stuff, when I looked at uh, backup plus drives in the past, we looked at one of the fabric drives as well. This drive can directly connect with your phone as well, something we've tested before. But what I really like about this is just I like that modern aesthetic design. I think it sits really well on a desk, whether you're going to be a gamer that uses those LEDs, which you can turn on and off, as well as cycle through lots of different modes. I like this design. I know it's quite arch and it's quite sharp, and it won't be very pleasant in your pocket, to be honest. Um, I will say that I'm a big fan of this physical design of this drive. Now, an area that I don't think gets anywhere near the credit or uh, kind of the, the notice that it should, and again, Seagate, you should be louder about this, is that recovery services. This drive um, has got five years of warranty because it's part of that Fire CUDA series, but it's also got three years of uh, data recovery services included, which to me is paramount. Yes, a number of you might buy this as a gaming um, drive here. You might be using this on your PC setup. You went for it because of the LEDs. And you're running lots and lots of backups from your system onto this drive. Whether you're using it as a first or second tier backup, and again, always have two backups. Um, what I like is this single drive has up to uh, mechanical and forensic level data recovery services included. We've talked about the rescue recovery services before. You're not paying extra for that. That's rolled into that price there. And for three years, if you, you know, this drive gets wet or it's damaged in a way that is not considered your fault, you can get that data back or at least the best attempts to do it. And anyone that's ever looked at data recovery services, particularly mechanical data recovery, it is not cheap. We are talking thousands upon thousands of pounds. And depending on the complexity and the importance of your data, be it mission critical or pictures of like your family and irreplaceable stuff, the idea that yes, this drive costs a little bit more for all that Mandalorian bump from the logos and all the Star Wars and branding and the LEDs is great, but I'm paying extra for the data recovery services. Yes, you can get a year added on on a lot of external drives on sites like Amazon as well for 10 to 20 quid a year on top of that price, but that's per year and that's not buy the brand themselves, go to their own website, enter your serial number, that's inclusive with the drive. And I think that is more important and definitely better value than mostly everything else about this drive. I still like it, but please, if you're lit watching this video and you are on the fence about buying it, that data recovery services, look it up. It is not that common as an extra for an external drive. And an external drive that's got this nice, you know, frou-frou design, which again, let's, fa let's face it, it's, it's nice. That data recovery services should be louder than it is because it's that good an extra. I hate seagulls. But that's enough talking about the drive itself and how it looks and USB industries overall. Let's get this drive connected. What we're going to do is connect this to my laptop. We're going to turn all the lights off here we can. And then we're going to be filming this drive 
flexing through the LED settings there a little bit of Seagate toolkit. Again, I apologize in advance. Lighting is gonna be a bit of a problem because we're trying to film an LED in the dark and be able to see it with sharpness. So expect slightly fuzzy visuals there. I apologize in advance. Let's make our way over to the test rig. Okay, so we've set up, we've got the Seagate toolkit here on screen and there we've got the drive there. Or oh, uh, we haven't connected a drive yet. So let's go ahead and connect our drive here. Put it in and see how long it takes the Seagate toolkit to recognize it. The LED has immediately kicked in there as well. The LED living there just on the bottom. Again, I should highlight this drive. I'm not going to move it too much because it is a hard drive there. While I'm doing this, it is also worth highlighting with this drive that one, the LED is only at the bottom of the drive there. And two, I know it seems a bit fuzzy here on screen, but that's mainly because we are trying to get the darkness at the right level to record this while at the same uh, to show off the LED, which unfortunately means that trying to get the right focus on that camera is going to be a little bit tougher. So I apologize for the slight fuzziness of that picture there. Now, if we have a look at the options there, we've got the option to disable the status LED. That, that is not disabling the mainline LED there. That is to disable the rear LED there, as you can see there on camera. So if we go ahead and disable that there, it disables that light and that's just the status usage which is largely redundant when you're talking about this massive LED here on the bottom of the screen. You can obviously auto eject it. You can find out more about the information on the drive there as well. You can also choose whether you want to utilize a backup there in the background, which kinds of files you want to back up from your system, as well as the direction of how you want to back up. Is it from your PC onto the USB or vice versa? So that's all included with the software that runs with this drive. And you can run periodic um, backups there if you choose to. Um, on top of that, you can go with the mirroring there. So if you want to mirror uh, preset default folders on your system, to always be mirrored with that drive when you connect them there for some lovely live synchronization. That's something you can set up. But of course, the reason we came here is for those L, um, the RGB control there. Because at the top, you can do a little bit of stuff, find out more settings about the software. But really, it just comes down to managing the RGB there. So again, We've got that configuration there. You can go in and enable. So the ones if you're using a system like this laptop I'm using here, which is a Razer laptop, you can combine it with the Razer settings of your laptop, such as I've got, to kind of create synchronicity across all of your devices there. So again, we can change the intensity of that RG of the LED there to bring it up and down, sort of bring it up there and lower or increase the brightness there as we see fit. So again, we can bring that all the way to the top. And of course, we can disable it if we choose to, along with the other one, which kind of makes more sense than the status uh, connectivity there. If we go ahead and into the configuration, we can choose different modes. So we can have it so that it goes into a rainbow static. We can also do so it changes gradually over time. So the color breathes up and down. We've got other options such as blinking, which again, that is the most 90s Christmas thing I've ever heard of. Then you've got the slide colors there all the way along, which I personally love, particularly if you do that in a fire effect. And then, of course, you've got custom builds that you can choose to do certain colors that it can flick between, all of which are a certain brightness. Or when the drive's not in utilization, turn it off. Or when the drive's been accessed, those LEDs signifying utilization. So again, we can go ahead, change some of these colors if we pick to something else. And again, all the way along. And then we can go ahead and save our new... Um, custom uh, switch there and that will now flick and do that flavor of our choosing between all of those colors a lot of which we can go ahead and reset the pattern if we choose to and again brightness can be adapted nice and easy all the way through from such as the internal hue some lovely little options and again I know most people that are into their storage aren't really going to care about this sort of thing but I'd say that it's nice to have this level of control. And a lot of gamers that have got those big LED gamer rig systems out there are probably going to enjoy this. But for now, to go back, we can go back to the solid color, save that there, bring that brightness back up and reset it back to the way it was. And of course, if you've got, once mentioned, uh, that Razer support on your laptop like I've got, you can synchronize it with the rest of the LEDs on your system. I'm going to end things there. This has been my Seagate Fire Cuda Gaming hard drive overview and review of this Mandalorian um, licensed Beskar Ingot um, hard drive here. If you are looking and interested in that, there'll be links in the description. Overall, 
it is, of course, you're, you're paying extra for the licensed drive there, but I do think a number of you may w do well to take into consideration the additional uh, data recovery services, that design quality, and just some of the sick effects you can do here if you're already running a gaming RGB setup and you want to synchronize them all together. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed the uh, video. Subscribe to learn more. Use the free advice section over on NAS Compares, and otherwise, I will see you next time.